Loud. Hey, everybody. It is Wednesday, May 15th. You're here at the Chaos DEI Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Working Group. I will drop the minutes in the chat. It's lovely to see you all here. We're just talking about guinea pigs and cats and pets and all of those things. Um, if you would like to add your name to the agenda, that would be great. And just a quick reminder that this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct, so just keep that in mind as you interact with us. Um, yeah, and as you know, cameras on, off, whatever, we don't care. Are you sick, Matt? I just have got very bad seasonal allergies, which I have never really had, so it's very odd. Ah, oh, weird. Yeah. I did try Flonades yesterday. Yeah, how yeah. was that? It really worked really well. So that was a told you, man. big win. I think you can get Dr. Goggins has, yeah. You can get addicted to it? I think you can. Well, I know oh. some of those you can, so yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm not, ter <laughs> not terribly concerned about that, but. <laughs> I'm definitely addicted during allergy season myself. <laughs> it is helpful, I know. Um, okay, so first thing on the agenda is uh, based on a conversation we had l two weeks ago, maybe? Probably, because it, we didn't have it last week. Yes, 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 yes. So Emma Irwin had opened an issue um, about this uh, idea of reevaluating inclusion with, with regard to leadership in, in particular, but also just kind of in general. And so we, we talked about it a lot. We decided that maybe we would need an extra or a second leadership um, metric. So I did start that uh, here. I was not sure about the metric template, though, because I know that's kind of in flux, right, Matt, still? It is, yep. So I, just last week, obviously, I didn't have much time to attend to it. But yeah, no, no, no. What we're doing with the description objectives is good, you know, just kind of combining those, because that's going to be an approach. Um, the, the tags, I don't, I mean, we can add oh. those. I mean, I do add them, but in the in WordPress, so we yeah. don't like actually put them in. No, here. yeah, it's not in the metric. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know, I'd have to look. Okay. I think that whole area around data collection strategies. Yeah. Filters, I think just, we're still going to have that, but I think like filters is going to be a uh, heading at the same level as objectives okay and then data collection strategies would also be like i don't know okay we're getting rid of i believe we're combining description and objectives right did that you say that we are yeah, yeah that's all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. all right and it's that bottom i'm trying to work through i don't know what risk assessment through self-introspection is actually. so this came yeah this was from um the other uh metric that i kind of stole from which was inclusive leadership and this we had as a as a data collection strategy okay so i kind of oh. that at the as a three um I, 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 the same was of filters is kind of where i was thinking but we can change the headings and however we want to do it um i don't know if we want to take time now to look through this uh this is very heavily based on the other inclusivity the inclusive leadership metric just i added uh, this bit right here and change the wording of a couple of things, but mo a lot of the things were were similar, just looking at it through a different lens. Which, which is this risk assessment part, because that's really what we're looking for. And did this pull did this pull things from the other metric, like pull things out of the other metric? Uh, I left the other metric how it was. I did not okay. change the other metric because it's used in badging and I didn't mess with it. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like what is in there is um, can can be tied to inclusivity, particular okay. in particular. So I didn't mess with it. I mean, right, right off. So there's there's a challenge that I see in some of these. Like this is long again. Yeah. Like a part of what I'm trying to do with the metric template is really just shorten the metrics themselves so that they're really immediately accessible. But I don't know how to do that while still providing people the necessary like 
questions that they might want to ask as part of that? Yeah, if anything, I think this uh, filter bit seems pretty obvious to me, you know, like, and people could filter however they want, I think. I don't know that we need to really... Speci like uh, over specify things for people? This I think is, is um, useful. Uh, these questions I think are pretty useful, but yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Sean. I was just going to suggest that maybe because in the case of a metric like this where we're not able to gather it from trace data, I do think the folks implementing it probably need some of the questions that you have that make it longer. And I'm just wondering if perhaps we could organize the metric in this case as the core metric at the top, like on one page, and the detailed questions that can be asked to assess those factors, like in an addendum or like an optional section, because I do think it's hard to shorten the ones that require questions like this. Because how do you make it not require questions? Because if we if we don't give people the questions, they don't know how to go about. They don't know what to gather for the metric, right? Like that's yeah. the catch twenty two. Yeah, I mean, I, I of course yes. Um, I uh, I don't. So like I'm trying to think of this in line with the metric template too. So. Like, I really think that a lot of people, and I understand your point, John, but like yeah. right above data collection strategies, like everything above there, like mm -hmm. just the description and the question that you're trying to address. I think this is like what the majority of people care about. Like, I agree. That they just want to know what the, what the heck this thing's about. You know what I mean? And so like data, like data collection strategies, we provide it for the non-trace data like this with the questions. Mm -hmm. Right. But in the in the ones that require Grimoire Lab or Augur, we actually don't provide anything. We just we just say there's a there are some tools. Go knock yourself out. And sometimes um, we provide visualizations, but I get your point. So um I don't know. I'm just, it's that balance of, are we just trying to point people in the right direction? Maybe just a few sample questions that could be asked. Are we trying to suggest that this is the definitive set of questions that could be asked? Um, like what so, are we trying to, how are we trying to hand people off on these metrics? How, when you say we're, how are we trying to hand people off? Do you mean well, like in the, trace data, in the trace data ones? Sure, we provide visualizations, but we're not really showing them how to implement the metric. We're just kind of saying, here you go, here's the idea, like, and here's what it could look like. Now you're going to have to go use the software tools to really put this into practice. So we're kind of handing the person off to go use the software, is what I mean. And so yes, that's fair. That's fair. That's kind of what we're doing. You're right. And so in the case of this, like, is there, we seem to be providing a more definitive set of things, which is, that's fine. Um, or are we just trying to hand them off, like just orient, like, here's a sample question in each of these areas, like review and renewal, distribution of leaders, accountability. I'm not sure. So I maybe another frame that I is to think about it this way. This is a qualitative assessment kind of a metric. So when you say accountable leadership, the first thing I think in a faculty meeting is, oh, another platitude for my buzzword bingo card. Uh, but what we're doing here is sort of fleshing out how to get to that. And the, in contrast, something like code changes commits, everybody knows what that is. It's like, However we described account, it's almost relevant because most folks in open source know what a commit is. They know how to count them. It's the thing we've been doing for the longest. And I think the farther we get out leading in terms of thinking about how to measure community health, the more like on something like this, I think if we just gave them the definition and description and the question, I don't know if that's enough for anybody to operationalize this metric. What do other people think, Elizabeth or Anyinka or Peculiar? Uh, 
I personally like having a little bit of direction um, because there are things that if we just say think about review and renewal think about distribution of leaders like it doesn't give them I don't think enough direction. I like having these and that we say that that can include so this isn't meant to be an all inclusive list but it's enough. You know, like so if we were going to do a if we were going to do a self review of chaos like if we just said okay let's think about review and renewal like okay what does that mean but if we already have these listed we can easily go down are the leadership roles limited by time and require term renewal no yes whatever you know and then you can you can go from there i just think it makes it a lot more helpful for people honestly yeah i wasn't suggesting getting rid of them um, yeah what if what if we on the qualitative ones like had some limit on the number of questions, like 10 questions can exist in the metric, like 10 Likert scale questions. So it would be a little bit on us to take a look at, say, this list. I, I made up 10. I don't, whatever. To kind of identify what the, <clears throat> in this case, maybe two or three most important guiding questions would be in each of these areas. <clears throat> My concern is, is just, it's just, a, it's just length really is what it comes down to is that when we provide people with a lot of text, people just, they have attrition and I, they just stop reading. So you're saying, I think you're saying there are so many questions that it's actually not helpful that it gets so long. It, it doesn't elaborate. It just makes people go away instead of it, using it. Some of, so there was, I don't know which metric it was, but there's one. I think we've had a few and I'm not looking at this one in particular, but there have been a few that are they're really long in terms of like processes by which you would go through to assess this metric. Um, and I'm, I mean, I don't have any data on what I'm saying. So, uh, well, so I think you have some data, you just don't have like statistics. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if people stop reading, but my hunch is, is that when they get really long, they just, they meaning the metrics, have a tendency of losing a readership. Here's a question. So mm -hmm. it'd be helpful if we, the GitHub and Markdown in particular has a way to hide things, and then you just would click the like drop down to expand those sections. Would that mm -hmm. be helpful? Do you think? Because we can we could do that. It probably would actually. That's an interesting idea. So we would have like. Honestly, like data collection strategies would be hidden. Would be hidden. And then if somebody really wants to look into it, then okay, like they're taking it seriously now. Now they really want to dig deep. So that's an interesting idea. I like that. Because that's then it makes the metric itself. And honestly, then then like your first engagement with the metric is the title, the question, and the description. That's it. it. That's it. And then, you know, <laughs> do you want to know more? <laughs> and then that could be the, you know, the drop down or the I get the, the, the show the hidden part. I like that idea. I don't know. We don't, we don't well. lose. We don't lose the te the content, but we also don't overwhelm people. Yeah. How do you do that? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure a, I, I have to look it up again. I don't know off the top of my head, but there is a way I do it on our um, not is it, yeah, community contributions .md, mm -hmm. I think one of them, um, because it was the same kind of thing. It was um, like there was it was just too long. Uh huh. So let me just show you really quick. You just had to like tuck it into. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, tuck it in, <laughs> tuck in that shirt. <laughs> See, it's right here. So click for the list of so we had this big long list and we didn't want to like push that down so we just have this right here but how would that show up would that translate well to a website uh, maybe it'll just be like this little arrow but we could maybe work with it a little more we can see i don't know maybe yeah, it's no better. obviously websites can do it pretty easily in terms of like showing the blocks or not yes. the block. it's just that we because we pull from github for the metrics we would have to do it over here i think yeah yeah um, but it can be done. It's this just a code right here. Yep. Here. Oh, okay. Oh, and I, okay. Okay, interesting. 
We can, we can, that's just an idea we can play with if we want. I've also noticed too that now, oh, it's not doing it on this one. One of them, it was, it kept, yeah. So like it, it does it automatically now in Google ah, Docs. Okay. And I'm like, no, I don't want it to do that. I want to, I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to put these here because we're going to use this for our, yeah. Anyway, that was a pet peeve of mine yesterday. So let's pretend we could do that for a second. The, the hide the data collection strategies or, I mean, at that point, you know, we could maybe name it something a little bit different, but um, like, would you like to know more? Because then we can show the visualizations in there, then yeah. we can show the filters in there. We could show the the like the questions that you have. Yeah. And then it's almost like the headings under there. So let's say we had a top level heading of like, would you like to know more? Like And so then like data collection strategies would go away. Filters would be a heading, just like you have their visualizations would be a heading. Um, exactly. And then, and then maybe what we would do would be um, like actually have a uh, questions heading, you know, maybe not questions because we have question above, but yeah. like, you know, interview questions or I don't know, survey questions. Yeah, yeah. data collection questions. Like, well, yeah, like just because then we can have a section which is like, I knew I was going to get that wrong. Qualitative, yeah. Did you learn anything just by doing autocorrect? Did you learn how to spell it? I know, I know how to spell it. I just don't. <laughs> want to take it. I don't want to take the time to fix it. Every time I spell practitioner, I know how to spell the word. But I can't spell it. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. Yeah, like qualitative, qualitative data collection questions or something like that. instead of data collection questions. I just, because then it's like very specific. Like these are, you know, interview or survey questions that you yeah. could ask around this metric. Yeah. As soon as we hide that, I will like all metrics a lot better, not just this one. Yeah, me too. Because you're right, it is a lot. It's a big wall of text and it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. But it's good data if people want it, you know? Well, that's so why we'll have the do you want to know more? You want to know more. Yeah. I like that. I, I like that approach. Cool. All right. I guess we can also take that to the metrics development working group. Yeah. This can be something I'll add to the <clears throat> template that I can bring to next week to that metrics group. There's a question in the chat too from Anamika. Uh, which of the repos? I think it would go, my personal thing is feeling is that it would go in the DEI working group, which I think is where we have the others that are like this. Yeah. Yeah focus areas, it would go under leadership. It would be right in here. We would add it here and then the doc would go here. All right, well, if we want, if y'all want to take a look at this metric in offline, whatever, um, it's in the notes, in the minutes here, feel free to take a look. 
Uh, sorry, I kind of diverted us to the. No, no, it was good. It was good. Uh, it's in context. It made sense. It did make sense. Okay, let's go ahead and go on. Um, we are adding, for those who haven't heard, we're adding three new metrics to the DE, I should put this in here, DEI event badging application, which are these three right here. They've been in progress for a really long time and Adi Inca has been fantastic about helping us get it across the finish line. So yay, uh, that will be implemented. The, the, we will finish implementation probably today, maybe tomorrow. Is that, yeah, Adi Inca's nodding. Okay, that's kind of our plan, um, is to take this week to implement and test. Yeah, go ahead, Adi Inca, I see you unmuted. Uh, I just want to say today would be nice. <laughs> it would be nice. It'd just be, be done with it already. Whew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, something I did want to bring up, I was kind of hoping Kevin would be here just to talk about this a little bit more, but um, Kevin yesterday in the meeting brought up this uh, uh, comment about d adding more to our list devalues the other metrics. And I just wanted to bring it to this group and get some feedback and see what you all thought about that. And if it's, if you kind of agree with that or if there's something we can do to mitigate that effect or like what we want to do if, about it. I was, again, kind of hoping Kevin would come and have some ideas for us, but um, what, is, what does this group think about that? I mean, I don't think it devalues the other metrics as we have to add, as we're looking to expand the program, which has been a long time conversation. Um, you know, we just have to make room for new metrics and I don't think it devalues our our focus on those metrics. I mean, it, like if we if we just had a single metric in the, like version one <laughs> that was a hundred percent of the badge, then yeah, I mean if you add an, another metric, then that first metric is now fifty percent of the badge. But that's that just comes with kind of growing the badge to me. So I think it's all good. I was thinking, I didn't know, I was going to throw this out here. Do we think it would be a value to change the percentage? So like now you need a 90% to get a gold or whatever we want. Would that make sense? I, I feel like if we do do that caveat, we need to give folks a super heads up. Like we can't just yeah. people. So I would, I would maybe suggest that we implement these metrics and then maybe do it later um, yeah process wise i wouldn't want to do two things at once like here's three new metrics and the structure yeah. of the badge has changed as well um and that would also give us a little bit of time to just see how the awarding is going yeah yeah, I kind of like this. I, I mean, I absolutely like 100% support adding new metrics uh, as we go because that's like growing program. And I also think like family friendliness tends to be the thing that people have a hard time with and, you know, mm -hmm. having this funds to support different efforts. So I feel like this is giving them an opportunity to do other things. Yep. Dad. So I think it's, um, I, I don't know if devaluing is the right word, but I think adding gives just more opportunities to have more check boxes, you know, really. So the thing that would always trip you up or would often trip you up, now you have a way to kind of uh, compensate for that. Yep, I agree. Okay, cool. What do others think? Adinka, what do you think? As the one who's been kind of seeing these come through and mm, you mean um, with regards to devaluing? Yes, and also if uh, what you think about maybe changing the percentage, if we should do that right away, or if we should wait to get some data first on like how okay. it. Okay, so um, first I agree with uh, Matt that um, we are just making the program more robust by adding uh, more metrics. And it also shows that the program is active. It's being reviewed from time to time, which passes a good message across 
that the badge, um, the badging program is active and it's um, it's alive, right? Then um, as per the uh changing the percentage again i think we should get some data first let's see how people react to um the new metrics especially for some of our badges that have been you know sending in more applications so they are used to the old ones let's see how they react to the new to the new metrics yeah that's a good point so um i think uh a benefit of this program is that they do know what's coming. And so they've adjusted their events to make sure that they get a good batch. And I think that's kind of the whole point of this program is like, you know, like, so even mm -hmm. if they do just, it is kind of like a copy paste thing for some of them. It's okay because they've, they've already like thought about all of these things. And, and so there's, you know, yeah. have more things for them to think about. You're right. Just kind of keeps it, keeps us all moving forward and making more inclusive events. I agree. Sweet, okay. I, I was trying to check um, where the budging application happens, where the form is. Uh, probably I'm looking in the wrong place, but I can't see these new metrics that we're adding in the form that is used to apply for the, like to generate the issue. It is here. It's not live. You can't get to it except oh, for if you have the, I, because we haven't switched that over yet. Okay. okay. Uh, but it will be here. I just have it hidden under this. Okay. I, I, um, I, I understand. Yeah. So if you want to test it, help us test it. Um, that's how you would do that. Um, and then you'll see here. Uh, I'm glad you said that because I actually wanted to show what we're actually asking. So this is under event of accessibility. These are the things that we ask. Wheelchair accessible mm -hmm. venue, color blindness about slides. We ask um, the signage at the event and if they can provide other accommodations and then tell us how you're sharing that information. So that's that. Yeah, I would want to test it because I know the peer has been approved, but um, probably a second test wouldn't hurt. Yeah, and then event location inclusivity, we ask, have you checked this for the list of concern? Just have you checked, that's all. And then have you checked for other events? Like sometimes you, you know those things, but sometimes you don't. So um, that's that. And then we just ask how they're communicating any kind of concern to the attendees to give them the ability to choose whether or not they want to come. Okay. And then Public health and safety, we point them to this badging program, which is um, our partners here. So we don't ask them to do the same things here. Um, there's a, a, wherever it is, event badging up here, um, where they, they go through their own badging thing. So we just ask if they've done that. And, oops, I shouldn't have. So we ask if they've done that and then um, we provide a link if they have and a link uh, to their own public health and safety. So they can say no on these two and still get a check under here. They've kind of taken it upon ourselves. But we are trying to also kind of direct people towards this. This is a lot more robust than uh, we decided we would go because they've like done a lot of research around, um, you know, best practices and things. So, so okay. that's it. And then under virtual, we ask, the only one we're adding for virtual is this uh, event accessibility. And we just ask closed captioning and if they're able to provide other things that, upon request. And again, the relevant links. So. Oh, oh, okay. All right, I, I see, I see. I was looking at the implementation here and it looks like just there is something small that was missed out but that's fixable. I'm sure it was hidden somewhere and I think I would not figure it out. Okay. But that's within the code, not the implementation of the whole um, generating of the issue. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll generate an issue using this form because I was looking for it to, to, to generate an issue that is that, that reflects the updated metrics. 
Yeah, that would be awesome. And then um, as soon as we kind of are done checking, we'll switch this URL to be the the norm, the regular one, and take away this dash two. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm thinking. Let me actually generate that issue along the way so that um, we we could have this merged in the next few hours. So um, hello, Hinok. Yeah. So you were talking about me missing out something. Is it in a budget API? Um, no. Um, it's just um, there was something. There is some piece of um initial, initial. What do I call those? Like, um, um, uh, uh, so so when you check this uh form, there there are check there there are check boxes that are under every every. Um, yeah, those ones. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when someone clicks on those, um, there is there is a mark they get for that, but that is calculated somewhere else in another file that was very hidden, and I don't see any changes in that file. But so what I'm asking is, is it is it in the budget API? Because that's oh, yes, what yes, I've yes, yes, done. Yes, yes, yes. It's in the code, not here in the form. Okay. In the budget API, in the implementation you made. Okay. Do you mind um like talking to that on the PR I created so that I can look into it because I tested it and it was working. Yeah, it's what I'm looking for. But it shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be that much. Let me look for it and tag you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. If you have other suggestions, like if you're reading this and the words look weird, just um, give us a shout in Slack and we'll fix this. I also see I need to put some breaks in here. Missed a break there. So yeah, almost there. Any other questions, comments, anything on the DEI event badging application? Thanks for, thanks for all the work on this, everybody. And I'll be interested to see when it's deployed if any of these metrics like create challenges for the reviewers or for the yeah. Applicants. And I mean, we'll just we'll understand that as we move forward. So yeah, for sure. We'll see how it goes. So maybe I didn't get just if something becomes a problem, say something. Okay. <laughs> don't 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 sit quietly and suffer if we've caused you pain. <laughs> okay, no problem. All right. <laughs> All right. Um let's go ahead and move on. Um don't think my blessing is here today. I don't really want to steal her thunder, but um she and I have been working hard on this ambassador program. So we have, a, we'll share with you the first draft of um, the specifics. And this is a document we've shared here a few times. We still need to write the actual application, which I think she is working on. Um, and uh, so what will, be, what will be forward on the website will be from here up. So basically, yeah what the responsibilities are, how you would become one, what the benefits are, and the, the application. And this is heavily, not heavily, this is inspired by the CNCF and a few others, which we have down here at the bottom. We've done some research on what others are doing in this space. So um, it is not without precedent. Um, we did have some questions, which I think we need to figure out the answers to still, such as like how we will measure the success of this thing like what is it that we're trying to actually get out of it uh, from the chaos side um it's going to be hard to like tie this back um to you know actual changes in our community i think if someone gives a presentation it may or may not result in people coming to chaos or learning about chaos or using chaos um so i don't know this is not something we can solve today but just if everybody can think about how we might measure the success of this, it would be great. Um, that, that was a big thing. And also, uh, there was 
questions about budget too, if there would be any budget to help folks get as an ambassador to get to different conferences or something like that. I think that's a, um, a question for the board. Yeah. Or somebody, not us. <laughs> to yeah. us. So, um, that's like a, just a question we thought as a benefit to a, an ambassador, official ambassador. I think those were our main uh, things. And then we would have an ambassador lead, which I'm guessing is going to be Mary Blessing. Uh, we can do it. We can both do it. She and I as co-chairs of community management team, uh, just to keep an eye on this and coordinate everybody, give them a calendar of open CFPs and just coordinate and, and be those those per, those people that keep it all going. Um, there's So there's this doc and then there's also uh, we created the standard of excellence too that we wanted to share with you all to get feedback on and this again is inspired by the CNCF standard of excellence and it's a little bit above the code of conduct so um, it just kind of defines a little bit more of what their role is and it does extend their behavior the the behavior that would be covered under this offline online in and out of the community and uh, whether you're representing chaos officially or not. And the reason we did this is because CNCF does this also, um, because you are now an official representative of chaos. So you are, you've told the world, I am representing chaos in this capacity. And in that regard, it's, it's like a little bit higher of standards for behavior. Um, so we have this, you know, and these are taken, some of these are taken from the code of conduct itself. Um, some we added as a as a as a person who's doing outreach and being an interface. Um, we also added this piece, which again is inspired from the CNCF, where uh, these two things where they're not like code of conduct things, um, but they are helpful for somebody who is giving talks uh, about chaos and and being that representative. Um, I think these are important to just to call out explicitly. Of, of kind of what we would expect somebody to do in the public eye and then there's consequences um, again if they you know if it's something egregious you'll go to the code of conduct team um, and if uh, if it's not but it is a violation of the standards then they would just be removed from the team and then questions and reporting so there's that I know I went through that pretty quickly, but I'm just wondering if people have immediate thoughts or feedback on that, if it seems reasonable. I think it seems reasonable, as the one other person with a mic on. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I know I'm just kind of throwing these out here for you. So these are in the minutes. So if you want to take a look at them a little bit deeper, then yeah, have, have fun. <laughs> have fun. And of course, my blessing and I are both um, very, very open to any input, any feedback that you have. Um, yeah. So I guess like my question, so like from CNCF and the ambassadors program, like have you taught, had a chance to talk with anybody there, I know Dawn has been like involved in that program. Because I, I looked, they have like 180 ambassadors for CNCF. That's uh, a giant, yeah, it's giant. It's a, it's a giant and, project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think so. We again took inspiration from them because they already kind of have things worked out. You know, they've been doing it for a while and they have the process smooth, pretty smooth for them. Um, but we aren't that size and we don't need to be quite so uh what's the word i want strict maybe on uh i don't know if i'm making sense but we, we can be a little more fluid and a, and a little bit more general i think because we are smaller and we don't i mean yeah. the people who would be on this team we've already talked about doing a pilot with a few people and then you know, expanding it, but I can't imagine. I mean, if we get to 180 people on the ambassadors, then chaos is going to be humongous. Yeah, the the scale of CNCF requires something much more structured than. Mm -hmm. than no, I, have, I, mean, I understand that CNCF is bigger than, than the chaos. <laughs> it was not. It was just 
it was more that like of the 180 ambassadors that they have, like, what, I don't quite understand what the expectations are of those ambassadors. I know they have like a list of things, yeah, um, but they seem pretty general. Yeah, and like so, um, yes, I think so for us, we're just hoping to help educate people um, through blog posts, through uh, writing, through videos, um, you know, what, whatever it is that that helps kind of educate and then public speaking and then helping understand questions. So it's really about to increase the awareness and adoption and um, just advocate for healthy open source communities. So it, I mean, it's happening already informally, like people are already in chaos giving presentations about this stuff all the time. You know, it's, it's kind of a core group, I would say right now, but that core group is growing. So like Don does a lot of this, of course, Matt, you do, Sean, you do, I've done a few, but not, you know, Ruth has done several, um, Mary Blessing is going to be doing some. And I think as we grow, like more and more people want to help do this but they just need a little guidance and a little bit of validation, I think, that they are allowed to do it. I think that that's a big thing is like giving people permission um, to do it. Yep. Yeah, I think you're right. I think so especially too, if you're trying to get a visa somewhere, being able to say, I am a chaos ambassador. I am an official representat or representative of this project. I think it goes a long way. And I think it also goes a long way on a on a resume or, you know, something else, too. So, um, yeah, just that official title, I think, is pretty helpful. OK, we so then would we like evaluate a, a person who is an ambassador like after a year or something? Is yes, there... so, um, we have it down to, that you can stay on as an ambassador as long as you want, but you do need to sign this every year just to reaffirm their commitment. Okay. Um, so it'll, it'll kind of like, we'll give you that out. Like if you don't want to do it anymore, that's fine. Then you can do it. have like a group of people. So let's say that an individual was um, given the title of chaos ambassador. And then over the course of the year, like they worked to get the title and they put it on their resume and they, um, you know, just they, 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 it was a good, it was helpful for them. But then when we really look back on like the contributions to the project, like they weren't in the meetings or they didn't present or, um, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> like they, they yes. have the title, but they didn't. They're not doing the responsibilities. Yes. Yeah. So we do have this policy for removal okay. for inactivity or, you know, violating failure to fulfill the responsibilities. Of and okay. so, um, and we can remove anybody at any time. Really. Maybe, maybe, maybe then, like instead of ambassador removal, like mm -hmm. call it like ambassador, like um, like annual review or something like that. <laughs> that is yeah. maybe like rotation. Yeah. No, no, like it, it is. Just, uh, go ahead. Uh, it, yeah, it, what you suggest is good. I'm just thinking in a in a way that we would have a a process by which we can evaluate how well they're doing or maybe not even how well they're doing just that they're committed to some of the things that they said they were going to do and like yes. the language maybe that i see they're like failure and removal and like maybe that's a little harsh yeah a little harsh um But I, I will say this too, like that can, the review can be an uncomfortable conversation sometimes. And um, like if somebody's not doing what they signed up to do, like somebody would have to tell them, <laughs> you're not doing what you signed up to do and we have to take this away. So I see that Adiyanka has Yeah, it. and um, sorry, I think I know you have your hand up, but I will just answer this really quickly. So that we would leave to the ambassador leads, which right now would be Mary Blessing and myself. Okay. Um, and this is to like help them find resources, evaluate new on board and take any. So yeah, I think actually we don't specifically say that, but we should. This It was also like this too, to see, you know, kind of what what we're doing and if what we're doing is making sense. There was one question um, that I had for the group, and I don't know where it is now. Oh, here, right here. Active member? No, 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 no. Where was it? 
we were I was wondering if we should have a an explicit number of things they should be doing or if that was going to cause problems for people like I, I don't want people I don't know where my comment was but I don't want people to think that they um, can do like two things and then they're done but also I don't want them to do things for the sake of getting their number in and I also don't want them to think that they have to do a thousand things to, and then before they're done, you know, so we need to kind of set some expectations, I think, of the level of activity, but I don't know how to do that in a good way that isn't going to have people either game the system or like do things for the sake just to just to check it off to say I did these things. You know what, does that make sense? It does. I have that somewhere. Um, so I would be really interested to see what people think about that. Oh, right here was. Yeah, minimum number of activities. Yeah, I don't have an immediate comment, but I get your point. Yeah. Adi Hanka, did you have a comment too? Yeah, sorry, Adi <laughs> Actually, it's, it's uh, with regards to what you've just said. You know, we were talking about the ambassador review and um, if anyone is going to be subject to removal or to being told that they are inactive, then there should be like a set of standards or a set of uh, expectations that's clear that, oh, I've not been able to meet uh, my goals as an ambassador this month or the past six months or for the past year. So I think that um, it would be good for us to have um, a, a, a set number of criteria and not be too worried about whether um, it's too strict or not, because I believe it will help in the long run. Okay, cool. I just put your name in here, as if that was your comment. Um, yes, okay, fantastic. Thanks everybody. We are at time, I see. I did not get a chance to mention this. That They mentioned it yesterday in the community meeting, but should check this out uh, from Chaos Africa team. This is a really cool project and a really cool event. So go check that out for sure. I appreciate all of your feedback and your input today, everybody. That was really awesome. Really good meeting. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're, you should know your dog's voice is comforting. It, it soothes me while we're on calls together, so. He soothes me too. <laughs> Except for in the middle of the night. She's so loud in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. Doggy you see Pat. That's what I'm looking for. It does. I'm sure it exists. Bye. I'm sure it does. I'll see y'all later. Bye, everybody. Have a good one.